in this session we will uh, we'll try to discuss few examples of the direct sequence spread spectrum we have already discussed uh, the fundamental relationship between different parameters like signal to noise ratio processing gain and uh, the bit rate and the symbol rate that we have already discussed in our previous lecture so if you want to understand more about the uh, numericals or more about the relationship between the different parameters of the direct sequence spread spectrum you need to watch our previous uh, session so let's start a few examples so that we can better understand how we can uh, describe the dss for example one a pn uh, sequence is generated using a feedback shift register of length m is equals to 4 the chip rate is 10 raised to the power 7 chip per second you need to determine pn sequence length chip duration of pn sequence and pn sequence period so first we need to see what is given given is the chip rate that is 10 raised to the power 7 chip per second the second uh, the, the length of the register m so that is equals to 4 so the first question was that you need to uh, calculate what is the pn sequence length we know the basic relationship for the pn sequence length n which is equal to 2 raised to power m minus 1 so m is known so that is why m is 4 you can insert the value here so 2 raised to power 4 is equal to 16 so 16 minus 1 is equal to 15 so here you are adding extra 1 because you are winding all 0 uh, conditions and taking uh, this extra minus 1 the second question was that you need to calculate the chip duration of p and the sequence chip duration we already know that chip duration is equals to 1 over rc and rc is the chip rate chip rate is already given that is 10 raised to power 7 chip per second so if you insert that here 1 by 10 raised to power 7 so this is equals to 10 to power minus 7 second or you can write 0.1 microsecond because micro mean 10 raised to power minus 6 third one was you need to calculate p and sequence period so p and sequence period is basically the product of the chip rate duration multiplied by the p and sequence length so that length we have already calculated which is equal to 15 and chip uh, duration that we have already calculated 0.1 microsecond so if you insert that here so the answer will be 15 multiplied by 0.1 and micro so that is equals to 1.5 microsecond let's have another example a uh, one of uh, a half rate convolutional code with the d minimum equals to 10 is employed to encode a data sequence occur at a rate of 1 kilobit per second we use bpsk modulation scheme the DSSS tech sequence has a chip rate of 10 megahertz. So you need to determine the coding gain, you need to calculate the processing gain, and then you need to calculate the jamming margin. And in that case, you are assuming your signal to noise ratio that is 10 dB. So, what information is given? The rate is half, D mean is 10 and the data rate 1 kilobit per second and we know the modulation is bpsk and the chip rate is 10 megahertz so what we need to calculate the coding gain first first question was that you need to calculate what is the coding gain so like code rate is given that is uh, uh, rc which is equals to n by uh, k so 1 by 2 so n is 1 k is 2 so n is basically the length of the message and k is the length of the code word so that is why uh, it, it is equals to 1 and 2 and d mean is equals to 10 data rate is also 1 kilobit per second or you can say 1000 bit per second and the other one was chip rate so that is equals to uh, 10 megahertz or you can say 10 into 10 is power 6 hertz the coding n is equals to rc multiplied by d min so rc is given so that is code rate so code rate is 1 by 2 d min is 
10. So 1 by 2 multiplied by 10, the answer is 5. So that is linear of magnitude. So you can convert into dB value. Taking 10 log 10 multiply of 5, that is equal to 6.989 dB. The second question was that what is the processing gain? So for the processing gain, you need to know what is the spreaded bandwidth. So you need to know our new rate of the new one. So means that what is the length of the code word message that was k multiplied by the data rate or you can say bit rate. So the length of k is k is equal to 2. So Rb is equal to 1 kilobit per second. So 2 multiplied by 1 and you can say it is a 2 megabit or 2000 bit per second. So then you can calculate the processing gain. So that is the bandwidth of the message. Uh, so or you can say that is equal to chip rate divided by the uh, chip rate divided by the data rate. So chip rate was uh, 10 to the power 7 and your bit rate was 2 into 10 to the power 3. So that is equal to uh, 10 divided by 10 into 10 is power 3 divided by 2. So 10 if you divide 10 by 2, the answer is 5 into 10 is power 3. So if you take the 10 log 10 of 5 to 10 is power 3, the answer is 37 dB. Third part is jamming margin. So jamming margin is basically equals to the processing gain. So this jamming margin is in dB. So processing gain plus code gain minus signal to noise ratio. Processing gain that we have already calculated 37 dB. Code gain that we have already calculated that is 7. And SNR which is given which is 10. 37 plus 7 that is 44 minus 10. The answer is 34 dB. So let's have another example for better understanding of the uh, DSSS. What is example? A DSSS system has a bit duration which is 4.095 microsecond millisecond and the chip duration is 1 microsecond. Assume that the probability of error is not required to exceed 10 to the power minus 5. You need to calculate the jamming margin. So what is given at first you need to see the uh, process uh, uh, bit rate so that is 4 millisecond and what uh, sorry bit duration and the chip duration is one microsecond so for the jamming margin basically jamming margin is for to calculate the jamming margin you need to calculate SNR and then you need to calculate the processing gain so that is why first we need to remember what is the processing gain because uh, the processing gain is the ratio of the bit duration divided by chip duration bit duration is 4 0.95 millisecond divided by 1 microsecond. If you divide that by micro and milli, it is 10 raised to power 3. So if you multiply 4.095 with the 10 raised to power 3, the answer is 4095. And we also know that processing gain can be represented in terms of n as well. The second uh, uh, given thing was that the error of probability should not exceed than 10 is power minus 10. So if this is the assumption that the probability of error is not exceeded than 10 is power minus 10 and the modulation is BPSK, then we need to uh, remember that the SNR for this type of information will be equal to 10. So will be equal to 10 dB. Okay. So will be equal to 10 dB. So we we are given this magnitude value linear value and this value in a db value so we have to convert this into db and this is already db so 10 log 10 gp so 10 log 10 4095 so 10 log 10 gp so gp is 4095 and if you take in the log 10 of 4095 and multiplying with the 10 the answer is 36.1 and then minus SNR so that is equals to minus 10 that is 26.1 dB. What is the number of bit or PN sequence length? So the, if that is asking the question. So PN sequence length we already know the formula 
that is 2 raised to power m minus 1 and uh, in that case number of bit required so it means that we have already calculated n that is the processing gain so that was 4095 4095 equals to raised to power m minus 1 and then in that case 2 raised to power m is equal to 4096 so if you're taking the log on both side log 24096 and then the answer of m that is equal to 12 bit so the number of bit is 2 so that's all so i hope that uh, you have understand all the examples so but uh, if you still have any doubt or any question you are most welcome you can write your comment uh, question in the comment box and we will try our best to answer the question so thank you for watching the video